What's up, everybody? So today is the day that we've been building up towards. Today we're going to try to tackle a still life. In a still life, if things are still, that means they are not moving. They cannot move on their own. So in a still life, we're going to see things like food, dishes, plants, cloth, um, toys, bones, etc., etc., etc. It's going to be things that don't move. And now for our, for this still life, we're going to try to keep it simple. So we're going to we're going to use between three and five objects. Three, two, five objects. And we want to arrange those objects in a way that we find pleasant or enjoyable. Now when, so I'm going to, yeah, put that right there. So here's my, um, notice a couple things about this that we want to pay attention to. Um, there should be overlapping. We don't want just three things in a row like this. One, it's not very interesting to look at. Two, it is actually more difficult to draw a still life that is arranged this way than it is to draw it when we have things stacked up and overlapping each other. Because when we have them this way, we at the very least, we have one thing that we can compare against something else as a size check so that we know that we're drawing things big enough or small enough. Um, now, when we draw, we always want to draw whatever is closest to us or has nothing else in front of it, the thing that has no overlap. And so from this angle that the camera is showing, the thing that is closest to me with no overlapping would be the apple. However, from the angle that I'm sitting to draw, this Nautilus shell right here is the thing that's the closest to me with no overlapping. Um, that first thing you draw is going to be kind of a a gauge towards you know how big everything else needs to be um, and again what we've been practicing we want to we want to try to break it down into those basic and simple shapes or forms before we before we start thinking about value and remember we don't want to think about value or details until we closer to the end. We want to make sure that we've got our shapes where they need to be in the right size. Now, I'm going to draw with this marker because I'm pretty confident in my abilities to draw, but also so that y'all can see it better on the video. Please do not jump into this still life and try to draw with a marker. You guys need to jump in with a pencil. One of these. I'm only using this so that you guys can see what I do. So, we're going to start off... Shell again. The shell is mostly it's a very rounded shape, so it's mostly spherical. And now from there, I know that if my shell is this big, my apple is gonna need to be quite a bit larger. And if you end up with some things that don't fit on the page, y'all, that's okay. Just let them go off the page. Don't, don't try to force them to fit into a space that they won't fit in. Just let it go off the page. And then I'll have the bear skull. And we're checking you know, the size, like how big is this in when I in my still life compared to to what I'm looking at. And it's okay. I know, you know, this is for a lot of us this is our first time doing something like this. So I have no expectation that it's going to be perfect, but we want to get it as close as we can to what we're looking at in nature now. That's the basic form, that's the basic stuff that I'm gonna need before I go in and try to do any type of shading or anything. Now the last thing we want to draw so we want to make sure that right now, we want to make sure we have a horizon line. We want to make sure that we have that line to make everything sit down onto the tables. Right now, these three objects in my still life are just kind of floating. 
in space. So we want to, we want to look at we want to look at the, the edge of the table behind where we're drawing. So for me, that's going to be right about there. And then from there, once we have that laid out, that initial drawing, and we're pretty happy with it, it's just a matter of laying in the values the same way that we've been doing. So I'm going to show you what that looks like real quick. So I switched from the, the time lapse to real time because I want to talk for a second about what I'm doing right here. Um, what you see me doing here is all I'm doing is creating some texture um, so that we don't have quite such a large empty white space. Now real, I understand that right now my, uh, my still life is sitting on this green paper, but underneath this green paper are the, the big rectangle wooden tables like we have in our school. So what I'm doing here is while I'm not going to stress myself out over making sure that these wood grain type patterns are going and are all placed in the exact correct spot because that would be torture, um, I'm just kind of breaking the pattern down or the, the texture down into its simplest forms, which are kind of these streaks of lighter value with a little bit of darker value mixed in. It doesn't have to be perfect you know and then something else to pay attention to once you've got the drawing done which I did in the time lapse are where the shadows fall underneath um, just a little bit more of this texture now something else to consider is this space behind so one of the things that I've told y'all not to do is to smudge your, your graphite smudge your pencil with your hand um, and the reason for that is that while that is a fine technique it is a technique better suited to creating texture than it is to creating these forms. So that's what I'm going to do up here, just so that I have a texture that is different and separate from what I have beneath. Now with this, I'm not, and I'm not going to do this necessarily evenly. I'm going to let there be some lighter areas and some darker areas. I'm not going to make it universally flat tone. To be, and we're just gonna pull that across. And obviously, want to be careful that you're not. And what that's gonna do is just to give us not even really gonna probably not even gonna take it too much further than what I've done right here. I just want it to not be plain empty white space. I just want there to be a little bit going on. Maybe I think I'm gonna bring mine just a little tiny bit darker out here towards the edges, out here towards the sides. Not a lot, just a little. A dab will do you. But then we've got, you know, it just, it creates a separation. You know, it helps to, to create a distinction between the foreground where we have the table in our still life and the background, which would be the wall behind it. Um, but yeah, and then I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna stop with that texture. <laughs> I'm not gonna make us sit through all that. But that, there's, you know, that's a pretty simple, basic, straightforward stuff. Now remember, as you watch this video, if you, you, the, the beauty of having these videos is that you can pause them and rewatch them at your own speed and at your own pace. Um, but I'm gonna say it again now at the end. The big things to keep in mind here: make sure that there are, make sure your objects are overlapping each other. When you start drawing. Make sure that you draw the object that is closest to you that doesn't have anything else in front of it. Make sure you're consistently looking back at what you're drawing. Make sure you're, you're looking carefully at the size relationship between these things. Make sure you're looking carefully for the forms that can be used to create it. You know, the, the cones, the prisms, the pyramids, the cubes, the spheres, the ovoids, the egg shapes. Look for these forms because if we, as we train ourselves to look at things as an artist, it becomes easier to draw things as an artist. Good luck to you. I hope that this is helpful and I'm sure that you're going to be successful. I can't wait to see what you produce. I hope you have an amazing day and as always, my friends, happy arting.